The Rebel T-65X Wing made its debut at the Battle of Turkana. We'll break down that battle in detail and look at the contribution of the famed four-wing fighter. The Battle of Tarkana first appeared as the intro cutscene for Star Wars X-Wing, the classic PC game. In that, we see the Rebel Alliance first use their Incom X-Wing against the Empire to great effect. Today, using secondary information, I'll break down and visualize the battle. It all started when, through ISB reports, the Empire learned of a Rebel fleet orbiting the planet Tarkana. Hoping for a successful strike against the Alliance Navy, 10 Imperial-class Star Destroyers were deployed. The flotilla was led by Captain Lennox in the Tyrant, who was supported by Captain Piet in the Accuser. Most of the detail we have about the battle is actually from the Imperial Handbook and a report from Captain Piet himself. So let's look at the battle. The 10 Imperial Star Destroyers emerged from hyperspace to block off the Rebel fleet. They fully scouted the Rebel force, which was comprised of 7 Mon Calamari cruisers, 2 Nebulon B frigates, 2 CR-90 corvettes, 4 GR-75s, and a fuel tanker. Piet doesn't explicitly say whether the Mon Cal cruisers are of the Liberty variety, the Home 1 variety, or something else. Based on this picture, we know that they had at least two Home 1 types. Admiral Akbar, who was leading the fleet, was also present in the Independence, a ship that was in Return of the Jedi, and is of the Home 1 variety. But the cutscene shows mostly Liberty types, so I'll give them two Home 1 cruisers and five Liberties. Maintaining their distance, the ISDs only fired upon the Rebel fleet with their long-range turbolasers. Their plan was instead to cleanly overwhelm them with fighters. The Accuser, the Flauntured, and the Tyrant itself all launched their TIE fighter wings, including bombers and interceptors. The Rebel Alliance had to scramble and launch their own starfighters, including three squadrons of Y-wings and two squadrons of the Incom T-65 X-wing, again, a brand new starfighter. The Empire here had a serious number advantage, but Piet was worried that the X-Wings and their new technology would be able to make up for this. Lennox decided to continue pressing the attack, held the Star Destroyers back, and sent the fighters against the Rebel fleet. The X-Wings, however, were easily able to keep pace with the TIE fighters, and not only that, were able to survive direct shots because of their advanced energy shielding. As the X-Wings engaged the fighters and the interceptors, the Y-Wings came through and picked off the much slower TIE bombers. The Imperial fighter screen was dwindling, something very dangerous for Imperial Star Destroyers due to their lack of point defense cannons. Taking the lead, Piet pushed the Accuser up into turbo laser range and began directly firing on the Rebel fleet. The rest of the Star Destroyers would follow suit, and at least one MC-80 cruiser would be disabled. However, by this point, the X-Wings and Y-Wings were moving among the Imperial Star Destroyers unhindered. Their powerful Proton torpedoes were able to take out at least two capital ships, and both the Formidable and the Ajax were lost. The Rebels, who now had the advantage, most likely tried to move their fleet out of range, while the X-Wings and Y-Wings continued to inflict damage on the Star Destroyers. The Empire was forced to retreat. The Rebel fleet was weakened, but no ships were actually lost, and any damage was eventually repaired. So what was the difference maker here? Well, let's look at Piet's post-mission recommendations. He said that the Empire should deploy fast-moving interceptors in greater numbers when facing Rebel X-Wings. And that's the key here. Clearly, despite having 10 Imperial Star Destroyers, the Empire did not bring along nearly enough ties. People always assume that SDs are operating at their max fighter capacity when that's not the case. In fact, I'd say that that's rarely the case. So they could have brought more fighters or also engaged the Rebel fleet early on. Undoubtedly, the Rebel capital ships help thin down fighter numbers, and had the fleet actually engaged the Rebels, they would have destroyed some of those ships and probably some of the Mon Cal cruisers. I mean, the Empire here had overwhelming firepower. A single ISD has more weapons than the MC-80, so not only did they have a numbers advantage, but also a firepower advantage. At the very least, they would have been able to put firepower on the Rebel ships, as Piet did successfully, but too late, and they would have definitely destroyed at least a few cruisers and probably caused a retreat. But that's just my opinion. What do you think of the Empire's performance here? 
what were their weak points, what were their strengths. Same for the Rebels. Let me know all of that and more down in the comments section. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoy this kind of video. If there's another battle from canon or legends that you'd like to see me cover, post down below. Until next time, may the Force be with you.